Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're returning, thank you for coming back, and if you are new, hello. Um, I wanted to talk about three um, of the most scary stories that I have, and they're not like paranormal, um, they're actually situations where I was just like, frightened. Um, so yeah, they... One, the first one is about um, when I was chased down the street at four o'clock in the morning by a screaming person. Um, the second one is when I almost got robbed while carrying a laptop. And um, the third one is after a night out being at a uh, car park of a shopping centre after falling asleep on a bus several times and being basically approached by a questionable man saying questionable things to me. Um, and having to run off to a bus driver and say, please, please, please just let me on the bus because I was literally falling asleep. I was drunk uh, and I was getting a lot of verbal, um, sexual um, things, but I'll get on to it. It's quite dangerous looking back. Um, so the first one um, is quite short and it was actually during quarantine. Um, I was on a walk and this was like 4.30 in the morning don't ask me why I feel like I was still pumped up from like I was staying around a friend's house and we'd fallen asleep really really early and um, I because we were going on benders and stuff <laughs> like because of the pubs not being open and basically I went down um, this street and there was someone on the other side of the road and I had my headphones in and all of a sudden, someone, like I looked across the road, I just didn't think anything of it, I just thought someone was there. And they started screaming, and I was so terrified, they literally just screamed so loud at me. And I was literally absolutely petrified, because I was just like, I think they were wearing sunglasses, I knew they had some form of glasses on, it was 4.30 in the morning, it was pitch black. And they just started screaming at me, and I was literally so scared. Um, and I sort of like looked at them, and I was just like, like are they gonna run at me and to stab me because there was no one around so I literally just like that was my immediate thought my in genuine genuine danger here is someone gonna hurt me um and I couldn't really see that they would um so I I basically stopped I stopped and waited to see um, and when I realised they probably might not, like, you know, I started walking back because I was like, oh, I need to get away from this situation, like, this is terrifying. Um, but, yeah, I literally started running back because I was just like, I was like, I'm not taking my chances with this, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to get stabbed today, okay? So, yeah, literally, I was like running back, um, and... I literally, I don't know if they carried on screaming, I couldn't really tell because I did have headphones in, so I feel like, I think my headphones fell out, obviously while I was running, I was running so fast, because I was just like, what the hell, like, I literally was scared for my life, because, you know, you hear about these people, all that kept going through my head was, you know, girl found murdered on the side of the road while in the middle of the night no one was there or something, do you know what I mean? This is the kind of thing that goes through your head at these moments, and I was just like, so scared, and I was running back. And eventually, um, I get to an Uber driver, which is like on the other other end of the street. And yeah, so I'm literally like, he's like, are you okay? Because he sees me running down the road at 4.30 in the morning, like, you know, completely petrified. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. But I told him that some person was screaming at me down the road and that I was scared. And he said, you can come and sit in the car for a minute if you want to like calm down. And I said, it's okay, it's okay. Cause I was like, I was like getting calmer, but I was like really glad there was someone there to talk to me at that point. Cause I was actually so scared. And I said, don't worry, my house is just down the road. And it didn't look like they were following me. And I did wait a few minutes just to make sure. But um, yeah, I just started walking down the road and I was just like, you know, I'm literally just, yeah, I need to just get away from this. So I just, I think I, I just walked home. Um, actually, I did walk home. I walked back to my friend's house. I was so scared and the thing is I couldn't wake them up they were really like fast fast asleep I tried so hard to wake them up for like 20 minutes and they weren't waking up alcohol whatever super heavy sleeper and they literally just uh, were not waking up and I was so scared but I'd literally just when I got in the door I was just like yes at least the door is locked they don't know where I live I'm safe now and stuff and I was literally just absolutely petrified like in the moment I think that's the most scared I've ever been by another person in my life ever 
and that includes anything. And I've had some experiences with other people, but that was genuinely petrifying. Okay, so story number two. This is when my laptop almost got robbed. Um, I was basically given this laptop by um, my friend, another different friend, um, at his house, because we were at a barbecue again during quarantine, and he gave me his, his old laptop, basically. Um, and I was sat at the bus stop, um, but the bus was like basically didn't turn up. The bus was supposed to come, um, and it didn't turn up. So that was kind of annoying. Um, but I was basically just sat there, and it was getting darker and darker, and I eventually told my friend, can you, can you drive me home? I don't want to be here while it gets so dark because I'm slightly, you know, it's not nice for a young person or a young girl at least to be sitting in the dark. Like it was getting pitch black at this point where you could just see cars driving past and I was like, yeah, I need to hopefully get a lift. So I was trying to get an Uber and my, my Uber account wasn't working for some reason. Um, so anyway, I tried I tried owner as well because I was using owner at that point. I'm trying, I can't really afford that now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I was, I was, I had this laptop bag on me, and um, around where that area was, there's a lot of like gypsies and caravans and stuff. And I'm not saying like all gypsies are going to rob you at all, because that's like a that's like a cultural misunderstanding. And I literally, but I swear to God, call this intuition or not, there was a caravan, um, and it came and pulled up more or less next to me and I just got this really really bad feeling out of nowhere like I just got this really 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 bad feeling you know are they gonna steal my laptop right uh, no I didn't think I was gonna no, that's the wrong thing but they, they drove up right next to me so bear in mind it's like a lay-by where a bus stop is and this caravan just drove into the lay-by and just pulled up there and I was like Do you know what no no not staying here no 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 like I'm not comfortable like there's a car right next to me you know you hear again about these stories of girl gets dragged into car and kidnapped and missing person and all this and I was like no no no, no. luckily for me I got up shot around the corner and there was a little laundress a little corner shop on the side of the road so shortly after a couple dodgy looking couple walk past me um and they're kind of eyeing me up straight away from coming around the corner they're sort of looking at me like this like you know intimidatingly like looking at me and looking at my laptop and i literally feel like that was like intuition telling me that i was about to be robbed basically because i was holding a laptop um and my friend said it's you know some people would could potentially I could potentially have been being robbed and it wouldn't have been like a violent thing they could have just you know been a bit violent like rough roughing me up basically to try and get my laptop off me so then they could sell it it was really shit laptop they wouldn't have got anything for it anyway but the fact I was holding a laptop I'm not saying gypsies are bad I don't want anyone to come at me saying I'm like culturally incorrect I'm not saying that but these people gypsy or not were eyeing up my laptop and eyeing me up for my laptop um or you know they just looked dodgy and luckily I was right next to a group of men in a car right next to me so I wasn't worried at this point but I just like look and they were just like looking at me like all the way until and then they just like walked into the into the into the um shop but it was, they, they parked in a lay-by you can't park in a lay-by <laughs> it wasn't a parking spot I don't think I mean I'm not 100% sure but 99% sure it was not a parking spot it was a lay-by and yeah they just did not look like the most savory folk and i literally was just i was concerned okay i may have been wrong but i had a big intuition and it still scared me so on to the third story is when this was when i was about 19 i want to say um so yeah oh my gosh it was like four years ago so yeah i was like i was like oh, i don't want don't want to say new to the clubbing scene because i've been going clubbing since i was like 18 but like, I'd been going a lot and I was like super in that hype of like, oh my God, yeah, like let's drink, let's drink as much as we can. Let's be sick and you know, drink till we're sick. You know what I mean? I'm a little bit less like that now, a little bit. I still like to be sick, but I did go through a phase of where I used to like going out and I'd be sick every, every single time. Like I ended up in hospital twice for alcohol. Um, so yeah, basically, um, I did that and not condoning or drinking at that level is the way to go at all. Um, I have mentioned on previous videos that I used to take mental health drugs, which would basically make me unaware of the fact I was getting overly drunk and make me sick at the end. So like now I actually can't drink as much as what I used to be able to drink with those 
pills you're not really supposed to drink on them you can but they say it can make you more drunk so it did make me go really it made it was a stronger drunk it made you feel more drunk than you were so yeah i used to just literally i used to just drink so much or i didn't even if i wasn't even drinking as much maybe i don't know but i'd be sick because my body would react more strongly to it or something but yeah i used to just get so sick and i that's probably what it is to be honest because i feel like i can't get i can't get as drunk now as what i could then but that's okay i could still get drunk enough don't get me wrong i just feel like the hangovers are worse i don't know it's because i'm older i do feel that my hangovers are getting worse well anyway i'm not that old i'm only 23 so anyway i was on a night out and i was literally going on my way back from this night out and i ended up on so many different buses i was on about four different buses or is that one, maybe even five my friend put me on the wrong bus but even if i wasn't on the wrong bus I would, oh no, he put me on the right bus, but I fell asleep on the bus basically. Um, and I ended up at the wrong location, obviously, because you've gone through the whole bus route. Then I got off there, got on another bus, again, I fell asleep, and another bus, fell asleep. Eventually, I end up in this shopping complex, bus, bus um, stop. There was no one there that I could see. Um, a bus may have been there the whole time, I didn't see it, but I was asleep, okay? I was literally asleep at a bus stop, like, in my little black dress, my extremely short, strappy black dress as a 19-year-old. A naive 19-year-old, pissed off her face, a grey hoodie, my hair looking similar to this, probably makeup, just whatever, and, like, little boots and a bag. Um, with my phone in it and all of my cards and everything. Um, so yeah, this random man appears because I was literally asleep at this bus stop like I literally could have been putting myself in so much danger how I did not get kidnapped or something I do not know so yeah I was literally just like asleep um and there was this guy and he turns up in this like denim waistcoat with like studs on it and he's like Portuguese his accent is Portuguese and he kept saying I'm Portuguese right so I just remember waking up and I don't want to use the exact terminology because it's actually disgusting. But he was making sexual comments towards me, very, very, very forceful sexual comments towards me, saying, I'm Portuguese, a sexual comment, a sexual comment, I'm Portuguese, being very, very, very forceful and very, you know, intrusive, rude, sexual, scary comments when I was 19 years old. And he didn't rob my purse which i'm literally shocked about that really could have happened as well he literally like just robbed my fucking all of my stuff uh, sorry he didn't rob my stuff oh my god i'm literally sorry i'm just getting hit up thinking about it so literally he didn't rob any of my stuff but eventually i kept, i just remember i kept i would hear him and i'd be like oh okay 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 and i like fall back asleep again like because i just like was 19 i didn't know like what to say like do you know what i mean i was just like what who is this guy do you know what i mean like i just was like uh, whatever and like i just like ran over to a bus like i literally just like did not eventually because i was actually like sensing that it could be quite dangerous so i literally just luckily there was a bus about to pull off i mean it must have been about five or six o'clock in the morning and i ran over to this bus driver and i was like can i get in please i'm like scared because this guy is like literally like saying some really weird things to me and he was like yeah that's fine just come sit in so he was going to like you know what i'll just go to hang oh i need to beat beat that out i don't want to say it near where i live but he said he was going to this destination and i said okay i don't care anywhere but here that's fine I want to go somewhere else and I ended up there and I fell asleep on that bus and then I ended up basically paying money for a taxi to take me back to a train station back to which took me back to my house um but yeah it was a very long expensive journey um and I ended up getting back about 9 30 or at 10 30 in the morning so obviously having left town at about four um so yeah, I just was on the bus literally for that many hours because I would get off, I would fall asleep on a bus and I think the bus driver had to wake me up. Two, two or two bus drivers definitely woke me up on the bus after having every single person go off the bus at the end of the bus journey and say, you need to get off now. This is the end of the bus. 
And yeah, so that's my three scary stories. Um, as I said, they're not paranormal, but they are frightening and they were character building. <laughs> I will never again fall asleep on a bus, hopefully after a night out. I will never again walk around at 4.30 in the morning um, with shorts on and in an area anywhere at 4.30 in the morning if it's not like in town and where people or loads of people are after like a night out or whatever obviously that context is different which is why I feel like I didn't really care I didn't think it was that big of a deal so, so I'm used to being out all hours of the night do you know what I mean but it's different when you're in lockdown and no one else is there it's very different and um what was my other one? Oh yeah where I always got my laptop or just obviously you're not gonna hang around in the dark um so yeah and just be aware of your surroundings sometimes but yeah um those are my three scary stories i hope you enjoyed and yeah i was actually trying <laughs> thank you for listening bye bye